Years ago, it didn't look like this. Many, many changes have taken place over the past years. An even faster rate of change over just the past five or six years. The future usually clashes with the past, but at different speeds, different tempos. C.P. Snow once said, until this century, social change was so slow that it would pass unnoticed in a person's lifetime. That is no longer so. The rate of change has increased so much that our imagination can't keep up. Well, whether or not Central Texas imaginations can keep up, the change is taking place right here in San Marcos. of San Marcos is Mrs. Tula Wyatt. Mrs. Wyatt has photographs and memorabilia pertaining to near... shock, Alvin Toffler asserts that we're living in an age of transience, that we're having more and more relationships with more and more people in less and less time. But it's not only... has been a, a very dynamic five years. As you probably know, the city has enjoyed a, a tremendous growth over the past decade. Uh, the population, the census population has increased some 48 percent, and uh, the bulk of this has come in the last five years. Uh, we see uh, a city really on the go.
So that's my question. Oh, you mean we're talking now? Right. Well, uh, I think San Marcos is uh, a town that has really grown, and I think that we have an awful lot to look forward to right now. Uh, our university up here is uh, just uh, in a real, real growth situation. I think we have almost outgrown our classrooms at the college, and, and I think our public schools are uh, doing real well. We're needing more classrooms there, of course, and I guess this is uh, normal all over the country, but uh, we have a, a real fine superintendent and, and his staff and all, I think, are very capable. And, all the high schools, I think, and the high school and elementary and junior highs are, are uh, handling the situation real well. Uh, our Chamber of Commerce today is, I think, growing tremendously. We had this. The university, whose population almost equals that of the city itself, plays a unique role.
call yourself uh, a devil's advocate or what? Well, <laughs> of course, what I envision myself as and what uh, uh, both friends and enemies envision me as are, are probably not very, very closely related. Um, I'm, I'm regarded by uh, my uh, many, many fellow businessmen and fellow Anglos as, you know, as uh, ultra-liberal. Uh, and, uh, of course, many of the student leaders, I, I hate to tell some of my enemies this, but uh, many of the student leaders regard me as uh, overly conservative. So uh, I consider myself uh, a progressive, I guess, a populist, basically, basically uh, a person who wants to see some constructive change and, and, and believe that change is inevitable and I want it to be constructive. And... Uh, that age, I was not the least bit interested in politics. Uh, I was probably 28 or 30 years old before I felt that I knew halfway about what I was talking about as far as a national candidate or even a state or a local candidate. ...means of communication and, and they're exposed to a lot more things through our TV and what have you, which we weren't exposed to when I was their age, but uh, I think that we've got to be a little bit wary about this, that uh, our young people are still young people. Uh, I'm a lot younger than someone 70 years old. Now, I admit this real quick, and someone who's 18 is a lot younger than I am. And so I think that uh, we say that these people are old enough to give their lives in Vietnam and Korea and the Second War and the First War. That's all well and true. But that still doesn't say that they're uh, mature people politically, if you want to say it this way. Uh, I just think that uh, the voting age is too young. Do you think that, that there will be um, a demonstrated effect on, on the government in San Marcos come the next election? Well, Dave, there's a small group of people uh, up here at the university who says they're going to do this, but they're also the same group of people who are advocating using marijuana, which I don't think is the least bit wise. And, and they, uh, some of them on occasion say that we need to have an uprising. Well, this is not true, and I think that if you would talk to these people and even uh, give them a polygraph test, that they wouldn't admit this. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be telling the truth when they would say the same thing over again. But I think they're looking for something to, to make a noise about, and this is one of them. And, and uh, uh, these people, I think, probably in the first election will make an attempt to have some bearing on the outcome of the election. And I just, uh, I just hope it doesn't come out that way. If it does come out that way, I hope they're doing it with the best of intentions and, and doing it for a purpose to help promote San Marcos rather than destroy it. But in this, some...
learning to accept uh, Mexican Americans like they do any other uh, person as, as people with the same aspirations, basically, as, as the older uh, Anglo-American community leaders have felt. Uh, so this, although the fear is very real in some people's minds, and uh, they fear a takeover by Mexican Americans, or have in the past, and now it's shared by fear, I think, of takeover of Mexican Americans and, and students by some of these same people. But. Uh, the uh, strong central leadership uh, group or person that most towns this size have. Um, we very definitely need uh, a lot of coordination in the community. Uh, this is something that we are working on and, and something that I think with the last year and a half we've seen a great deal of improvement in this area and, and that we have uh, strengthened our communication ties with the various groups, both health, welfare, renewal, governmental organizations that are doing things in the community. And uh, we are somewhat better off now than we have been, but we still have uh, a great deal of room to uh, improve this situation.
time, but I have seen some things in the city that, that impress me and, and give me great encouragement. I think the fact that uh, the residential developments for, from the standpoint of apartment developments in the city, which have uh, made possible some of the fantastic growth of this, this university, is a good indication of the faith of the investors in this city and from without as well. And we think it's just indicative of, of the fact that the city is on the verge of one of its most uh, dramatic growth. There are new businesses from uh, the standpoint of uh, uh, business development as well as industry, all of which have combined to make a very happy, stable economic setting for the city. And I expect a, a rather dramatic growth in the next 10 years. You had to describe...